Hello again. It's a great pleasure to welcome Alfonso, uh, who's the creator of Fable. And uh, we planned to have a sort of short half an hour chat about um, lots of different things, Fable community and so on. If you want to join, uh, send us a message on Twitter or Slack. We also have a, if you're watching us on YouTube, you can ask questions there as well. So Alfonso, uh, my, my usual first question is, uh, <laughs> where, where, hey, are we, where are we calling you for, to? And what uh, time I'm, is a, it? I'm in Madrid now, in my, actually in my hometown. So, mm -hmm. cool. And I'm enjoying a very nice weather here. Ah, uh, well, well, well. I hope you're doing the same there. <laughs> yes, well, it's nice, nice and raining in Seattle as always. So, okay. <laughs> um, I guess, I don't know, I'm not local. Does that count as nice weather? Probably. Um, <laughs> right, so um, let's, let's, get, let's get started. Um, I think the first thing I really wanted to talk to you was, was about Fable and the, and the history of mm -hmm. Fable because I've, um, I've been sort of lucky enough that, I've, that mm -hmm. I knew and I was watching Fable from the early days, but uh -huh. how did you, how did you, well, what is, what is Fable and how did you get started on this project? Okay, so first of all, I have to say that the Fable is nothing uh, very original because the, there were already uh, many attempts to translate uh, f -sharp to JavaScript. Uh, there's also a web server now. There's a, there was a phone script. Uh, uh, there was also something called Pete. Maybe you know about that. And uh, and yeah, so uh, it was. Uh, I think it was around four years ago when I, I came back from uh, to Spain after uh, living abroad. And uh, um, it was a lot of things starting for me. I, I started working as a uh, freelance programmer. I was uh, my background is in linguistics, but uh, I, I spent the two years before. Um, Programming mainly uh, C sharp uh, uh, Windows applications, and then I I started uh, uh, when I, I started uh, working as a freelancer. I got uh, more interested in uh, other paradigms. I started with uh, functional programming, and uh, I learned F sharp. And I also started at the same time uh, web programming, JavaScript. So for me, it was uh, um, I, I, I tried to find a way to mix uh, these uh, two things that I was very interested about. And um, uh, that was the reason I, I searched for something, and I found FunScript. It was a very interesting project, so it was also my my get to uh, start uh, uh, getting involved uh, with the community, uh, getting to know all the fantastic people in the in the F# -sharp community. Also, uh, Don Sime, I was in London, and I was uh, uh, giving some talks uh, about FunScript, even if I was a total beginner and, uh, and uh, my first step were really terrible. But uh, it was a lot of fun, and uh, and um, but uh, there, there was a uh, even if the the the, the funniest thing in funny script is the the name, and I wanted to keep it like that. But uh, uh, unfortunately, the the project was uh, kind of abandoned, and uh, I also started writing the JavaScript, and uh, I was uh, using this uh, uh, transpiler called Babel that was uh, is very popular in the JavaScript community to translate the. Uh, modern JavaScript to old JavaScript that is compatible with uh, uh, modern browsers. So then uh, around that time, uh, Don Sim talked me about uh, these new f -sharp compiler services that uh, allowed you to use the f -sharp compiler itself. Not uh, unlike FunScript, because FunScript was using code quotations, so it was a bit more complicated because you had to compile uh, before the, the whole uh, um, f -sharp code to .NET and then uh, read uh, the reflection metadata and then transpire it to JavaScript. So it was a more le uh, lengthy and complicated process. So I saw there as a, uh, an opportunity, and uh, I created a quick prototype to uh, take the AST, the abstract syntax trees, uh, provided by the f -sharp compiler services, and, and uh, pass it to uh, Babel. And uh, Babel could uh, uh, do this uh, JavaScript transpilation for me. And uh, it, was, uh, it was really nice. It worked very well. The, uh, I programmed uh, mainly in, in uh, f -sharp, also with a bit of uh, TypeScript and JavaScript. But uh, the F# -sharp type, uh, type system and especially the union types were uh, made the the work of uh, working with this kind of expression and abstract syntax trees uh, really a pleasure. And uh, the the most important thing that is that the the project got a, a very warm welcome by the community and uh, uh, very quickly uh, there were many contributors that we, who started uh, working on the project and also. Uh, some people they they started to make a project even if uh, at the beginning it was uh, like a uh, really baggy and not uh, uh, didn't have many features. There was a crazy guy that uh, created something called the gamma, and uh, <laughs> it was. Uh, which, uh, I think I know what you're, who you're talking about here. 
Uh, really? Um, no, I, I forgot the name. I don't know. It was yeah, a it was a very cool project, but yeah. uh, uh, I um, recommend that. Yeah, we can we can chat yeah. about some of the community projects and the contributors uh -huh. later on. And yeah, okay. I like the fact <laughs> that you start you start doing F -Sharp by uh, writing your own F -Sharp compiler. That's the way. Yeah, that's no, the no, way no. to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Because uh, everybody Ooh. knows that MEL is for writing compilers. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> that's right. Um, mm -hmm. No, my my first F -Sharp project when I started was was trying to write a F -Sharp to JavaScript compiler. So <laughs> it is it is it is somewhere know, online. You can get it, but it doesn't work. It was it was running only on F -Sharp one point nine point six point thirteen. Okay. Um, Cool. So, do you have some mm. demos we could we could see? I can switch yeah, to the sure. screen uh, and uh, let's okay. have a look at some demos. Uh -huh. And I'll turn off so, my okay. camera so that it's not taking space uh -huh. here. Okay. All uh, right. Okay. So we can now see your screen. No, sorry. Okay. We can see your sorry. screen. Yeah. Uh, can you see it now? Yeah. Oops. Yeah. All good. Uh huh. So uh, the first thing, if uh, anybody is interested in Fable, I, I recommend you to to go to Fable's website. Uh, where the, it's not uh, very big, but uh, we have some information here. So we have uh, some uh, welcome screen, and uh, you can see some of the things, uh, uh, some of the companies and projects that are using Fable at the moment. It is the, the gamma I just uh, uh, talked about. So if you're interested, you can check. And um, uh, Ionide, for example, the, the very famous plug plugin for F uh, code in F -sharp in Visual Studio Code is also using uh, Fable, which uh, was using a funnel script originally and then uh, and then Fable. And uh, here you can go, you can check the documentation. I think the, uh, this is important because the documentation is very short. So you just have the getting started guy here, and uh, then you just have to uh, a couple of. Uh, uh, documents, so it's. Uh, uh, I wanted to keep it short so people read it, and I know this. Uh, uh, I don't read much uh, documentation myself. Uh, I, I everybody loves uh, doing things, uh, uh, doing ex um, just uh, coding examples, but I think it's important because uh, there are many questions that uh, people ask me, and uh, they are replied here. So uh, it's uh, as you can see, it's a very short document. So I recommend if uh, you are starting with uh, uh, Fable, so you need to know. Uh, what is compatible from uh, .NET and, and F# -sharp Core, and also how to interact with JavaScript when needed. So it's uh, it's good to have a look at these documents, and then uh, uh, it's much better if uh, you have uh, you are stuck in somewhere, you can uh, you can just uh, quickly move on. Uh, but then we are talking about the samples. You can go to the samples here. We have this uh, page. Some of them uh, were stolen also from funny scripts. Some of them are new. Uh, these uh, are some games from uh, Phil Treffle. Uh, they are really nice and and, uh, and very interesting. I, I particularly love uh, this one, which is uh, uh, simple but uh, really really addictive. And uh, if uh, you see that uh, I stop talking, is because I, I I cannot stop uh, playing this game, which uh, happens to me very often. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the best thing is that we check. I was trying to let's minimize it. Uh -huh. So the best thing is uh, to open the um, uh, browser developer tools. In this case, I'm using Chrome. So as you can see here, we can see the sources, and uh, we have the JavaScript code. Uh, our motto is that uh, we have a very readable JavaScript. This is not the case because this is uh, minimized. I'm sorry, but uh, we'll see the report right now where you can see. Uh, more readable JavaScript, but the important thing here is that, that we have Webpack and uh, and uh, thanks to Babel and Webpack and uh, these uh, JavaScript development tools, uh, we have uh, we can see the uh, FSR code, and this is linked to JavaScript code thanks to source maps. Source maps, uh, in this case, they are not perfect, but uh, they are good uh, enough to just uh, write some uh, um, uh, right, just uh, establish some. Breakpoints. So as you can see here, I can uh, establish the breakpoint. I can see the call stack. I can uh, see the scope. I can see the uh, my types here. The canvas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Breakpoint that actually breaks in the FSRF code. Yes, that's right. And even sometimes. Uh, not always, but sometimes even the just hovering over the variables works. So as you can see here, you can see the information about this type, this uh, uh, value. You can see it uh, provided by, by the um, browser debugger. 
And this, so this works this because Fable generally tries to keep the JavaScript that's generated kind of nice and simple. So um, very often... um, yeah, partly, partly because of that, but uh, also it's uh, mainly thanks to Babel because uh, Babel it makes uh, makes uh, really easy to uh, to create one uh, um, the source maps and uh, link them to the to the source um, the source code, the original code. So uh, this is actually one of the main reasons when I. Um, wrote uh, Fable for the first time. It was uh, important to have Babel because uh, we had many um, many targets of JavaScript. Uh, at, at that time, the, you had uh, different model systems and, uh, and uh, different browsers. Now it's uh, more like a, it has kind of stabilized, but uh, still Babel is very important because of the source maps. So this is one of the things that I couldn't do myself with all the Babel. So. This uh, uh, this way, I'm very happy that uh, I didn't try to reinvent the wheel, and uh, I was trying to use uh, these uh, JavaScript development tools from the very beginning. So uh, I can actually show you, maybe in this game, there is another one, which is uh, Fable Mario here, Super Fable Mario. You have uh, uh, also some. Uh, I'll teach you. I'll show you later that uh, um, we have a recommendation which uh, you can see here, which is Fable Elmis to create uh, productive uh, apps. But uh, you can see also that it's, uh, it's very easy to uh, to mix uh, Fable with other JavaScript libraries like React and uh, Vue. And uh, if you're interested, you can check this. You can check also visualizations, like uh, uh, how to uh, interact with uh, D3, for example, a very popular uh, JavaScript library to create uh, graphics. We have this one. There's, there's so lots, and lots of things. Yes, yes. Uh, the, the, the most one of the um, main guidelines uh, uh, I had in mind when uh, creating Fable is that I wanted. Uh, actually, it's, it's, uh, it, it was nothing new because I, I took it from uh, FunScript because FunScript it, it was very easy to interact with uh, JavaScript, and also I, I took uh, some inspiration from TypeScript as well because I wanted to to have this. Uh, um, I really, I really like uh, uh, JavaScript and the ecosystem and the, and the tooling that is available. So I wanted to port uh, F Sharp to the JavaScript uh, ecosystem or platform, if you want to call it like that. And uh, I wanted to make like a, a first-class citizen of this uh, ecosystem. So uh, I wanted to integrate with uh, all the tools, and uh, that's the reason that uh, it's possible. Because if you have to create everything by yourself, it's uh, really difficult. We have uh, here a very complicated. Uh, terrain uh, <laughs> using 3GS, which is a WebGL JavaScript library. So this is very important that you can uh, just use, or uh, like in this case, in this uh, Mandrel uh, fractal, you just uh, using the um, canvas, so the API, the native API from the browser. All right. So um, we've been chatting a bit about the contributors as well, and mm -hmm. there was there was one contribution I remember. Which was mm -hmm. which was really crazy, crazy amazing, uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. and I see you already have a demo of this right here. So, uh -huh. what what was this, and what did so, what did this mm -hmm. mysterious NCAVE person do? Yeah, this was really funny because uh, this uh, when uh, Fable started to uh, get track in the community, and uh, there were some su suggestions to uh, compile the FSR compiler to JavaScript using Fable. And I was like, no, no, this is not possible. Fable is still very limited. No, it's uh, maybe in in three years, something like so, that. So just and, to uh, make and then sure one week later, this, this is NK, this, is, this, mysterious, <laughs> this, is, this is something NK. that is really hard to understand if you're if you haven't been doing this uh, before. So the idea is, the F# -sharp compiler is written in F# -sharp and it uh -huh. compiles in F# -sharp to .NET. But if Fable mm -hmm. could compile F# -sharp compiler to JavaScript. Then that means mm -hmm. you could actually run the whole F# -sharp compiler in the browser, right? That's true. That's uh, that's exactly the point of uh, of uh, uh, compiling the F# -sharp compiler to JavaScript. So uh, the, we we have all the repos uh, of F# -sharp, but uh, usually they just send the code to a server. They compile the code in the server and then uh, send your result back. In this case, uh, this is running entirely. Actually, this is uh, just uh, a GitHub page, static pages. So we don't have any server at all. It's uh, it's uh, literally serverless in this case, and uh, this is happening everything in the client browser. So we have, um, uh, as, as I told you, this. Uh, uh, I, I I I myself I didn't think this was possible, and then uh, the mysterious in cave for uh, whom I want to thank you 
for all the, his or her contributions uh, from here. But uh, uh, then uh, I come in up here and, uh, and uh, it was like, uh, no, no, it's, it's, it's already done. I, I compiled the, not the whole uh, F-Sharp compiler, but the uh, big part of F-Sharp compiler to JavaScript using Fable. And uh, now we have the ripple here and uh, you have some uh, samples. Also, uh, we have to thank uh, Maxime Angel, uh, another one of the core maintainers and uh, uh, greatest contributors in the F-Sharp com uh, Fable community and F-Sharp community as well, of course. Uh, so uh, he was adding uh, this uh, very nice UI uh, and integrating the uh, f uh, Fable Ripple with uh, Monaco, which is basically Visual Studio Code in the browser. So uh, most of the themes and shortcuts that you can use, even for example, like uh, multi cursors, you can uh, use them in uh, in the browser as well. And um, you have some examples here. We have the basic uh, canvas. You have the fan and games that uh, we just saw. So you just have to compile. And then I have to say that this is going to run a bit slow because I'm uh, streaming uh, a high resolution video and uh, my machine is not very powerful. But in your, uh, if you try it at home, uh, it should be more or less fast. So. Uh, as you can see here, this is uh, happening. You can see the code. So as you can see, the code is uh, uh, quite readable and, uh, and nice. And even you have some uh, auto-completion here. So now when I press dot, you should see everything that is available in the browser API. And also, Arrow uh, highlighting on the fly. So again, if I make a, a spelling mistake, because that's uh, <laughs> that's uh, the whole point of using a static type language, because uh, we are all afraid of uh, spelling mistakes. So uh, you can see the error here. And if I change, uh, let's see, for example, the atmosphere. Hey, if I want to change here, I recompile again, and then. This is compiling. Again, it's a bit slower right now because of, uh, uh, of um, streaming the video. And when this is finished, if it's finished someday. <laughs> Oops. No, it seems I broke it. Okay, for some reason, uh, it seems I broke it. So maybe, maybe the uh, high should, the yeah. high quality video streaming made the compiler mm. made the compiler too slow. But people <laughs> yeah, can go yeah, to think, people can go I to fable.io/repl and play with it mm -hmm. there, right? Yes, yes, sure, sure. Please uh, try it so, uh, so so you can see that I'm not lying. I think maybe I ran out of memory because uh, Chrome is very memory hunger. And uh, yeah, you just have to go to fable.io. Uh, and then click a ripple, and you should see it by yourself. So please uh, give it a try because you don't have to install anything. It's just everything running your browser. It's not a plugin. It's not a, a silver light. It's not uh, nothing. So just uh, uh, click there and start uh, uh, programming. So uh, I was talking about the uh, fable.io uh, where you have the documentation, you have samples. Uh, but there is also a very important page here, which is uh, fable awesome. Awesome Fable, actually, and uh, uh, here there are also many, many other contributions from uh, other people in the community. So this is uh, a very important source if uh, you want to learn about Fable. You have more samples. Uh, you have uh, tutorials here, uh, posts. You have uh, videos and podcasts. Uh, this is uh, uh, very nice. This uh, uh, what uh, F Sharp, uh, the first uh, podcast. Is uh, if uh, you like uh, listening. Two things. Uh, it is this one is a, a very nice summary of the current status of the Fable ecosystem, and uh, you have uh, also the main libraries that uh, are being used in the uh, Fable ecosystem, and uh, some of the tools like uh, the loader and the for uh, Webpack, which is the most used, but also uh, Rollup. Also, you have uh, a TS2 Fable, which is a, a tool which is used to uh, um, translate to to F sharp. Uh, TypeScript declaration files, so you can use um, JavaScript libraries in a type safe way from uh, Fable. 
and this uh, how we are using, for example, this uh, browser API just so. And some of the templates that are available now. So if you know the new .NET SDK that uh, you have these uh, templates available, so this makes it uh, really easy to start uh, any failed project. Sounds and some good. Of the that, mm -hmm. So um, go to Awesome Fable if you want to learn mm -hmm. more and find other references. Um, I think we've got around four minutes, and I've mm -hmm. accumulated a couple of questions. Huh. Um, one is one is something that mm -hmm. I actually wanted to ask myself as well. Uh, so yeah. the question is, um, I've heard you're working on Fable 2. Is there some mm -hmm. sort of roadmap? And what should we expect uh, in the next version? And I would add, what can people do to help and how to contribute? Yeah, you can go to uh, issues in the Fable repo repository, and then you can see uh, you can click this uh, this level, uh, which is dev uh, two zero zero. It's uh, uh, most of the uh, work is happening in the, this uh, dev two zero branch. So um, yeah, there there are many things. I I, I started. The, it was mainly uh, about this. It was uh, about uh, creating lightweight types because uh, one of the things that uh, we are having right now in Fable one point zero is that uh, we are putting a lot of information, which is good because you, you can have. Uh, a very nice JSON serialization you have for reflection. Uh, but this makes, uh, when you have a big application, this uh, uh, creates a big bundle size. So we want to, in Fable 2, we are trying to uh, reduce that. But uh, we also are taking the opportunity to refactor main things and uh, uh, some of the things uh, to, to, to see what the things work, uh, what, uh, what things uh, didn't work so well. Uh, and this is what we are doing. I, I'm uh, I'm um, really happy on uh, about the development because uh, the community is uh, very involved with it. And um, yeah, you can you can check here. We have uh, uh, this issue, for example, for uh, helping with the development. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot show uh, them uh, very well. I, I want to to have a, a, a repo with uh, Fable two uh, soon, so you can compare the the outputs of uh, Fable one and Fable two. Uh, I don't have it yet, but um, just to tell you that the, the, the development is going on and, uh, and uh, we are not stop and uh, we are uh, um, trying to improve uh, every day. So, so it's also important is, to know. Everything is happening on GitHub. Go to Fable compiler yes. slash Fable and um, find the dev 2.0 commands and you can, you can contribute there. Um, Absolutely. I've got we are another yeah. important <laughs> question. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, it's sort of follow up to, to, the, to all the conferences that we were chatting about earlier with Don. There's also FableConf. Mm -hmm. And the question yeah. is, do we know when, when and where is the next one going to be? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's the, the, the big question. Uh, we are working on that. Unfortunately, it's, uh, 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 last year was very nice because uh, we had this, uh, uh, this guy, Francois. Uh, Nikesh, who, who did a, a fantastic job and, uh, and uh, prepared all the things uh, very quickly, and uh, we had a very uh, a lot of fun in Bordeaux last year. This year we we wanted to uh, we want to make it in Berlin, so maybe it's a, a, an easy uh, an easy spot for to, to to reach from other people. And we also want to uh, make it together with a safe uh, with the safe stack, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, which is. Uh, Big in Germany, maybe we, we can say this. Uh, uh, if uh, people that don't know, it's uh, uh, a stack that we are promoting as a F sharp full, uh, uh, full stack, where we are using F sharp on the back end and the front end, and uh, we are uh, using uh, Almis. I just uh, because we are running out of time, we cannot uh, talk very much. But uh, you can will, just go to. We will to have a talk about Slack later on in the conference, uh -huh. so people will okay, so. stay with us, mm -hmm. and uh, safe safe talk is coming. Huh? That's great. Um, if uh, I also recommend if uh, when uh, if people are not tired of uh, watching talks, this uh, from the last F sharp exchange, uh, this talk uh, by Thomas is uh, uh, the other Thomas is uh, is incredible because he's uh, he has uh, impressive life coding skills and uh, he's showing how uh, using F sharp full stack and and uh, how the onto completion sharing the types and uh, the intelligence and uh, all the um, tools contributed by community can uh, really help you in, the, in your development. And uh, he's making just an entire web pack in just uh, 45 minutes. And uh, one of the, as I just said, one of the uh, biggest contributors is uh, uh, Maxim, uh, who created, uh, who uh, he's also, he didn't create himself, uh, the Fable Elmis, but uh, he's uh, uh, a maintainer. But he created Fulma, which is uh, a project that I really love. And uh, yeah, just uh, take this uh, Fulma. You can uh, take his uh, uh, 
his video or his slides, which are here. Uh, FSR Exchange uh, 2018 Olmish, uh, and uh, this is also a, a very good example with uh, with links and a, a nice explanation of the um, of the Olmish architecture and uh, the tools that are currently available. All right. I think if we... you want to know more things, you can yep. follow us on Twitter. I think we'll probably have to wrap up. There was one more question, so if you can manage sort of 10 second answer to the question. Oh, okay. Of, I'll try. Um, well, can you use Fable with the non.NET non uh, web applications like those in Python? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are promoting the safe stack, but uh, uh, Fable is not tied to any uh, backend technology. So you could uh, you can use uh, Fable on the front end and, and Python on the back end. Yeah, absolutely. So just use Fable. Let it to generate your nice bundled JavaScript file and embed it in your Python stack. Yes, yes. I, I, I don't know well about the uh, Python uh, Python stack. I don't know how they do things, but uh, yeah, you can just generate JavaScript and uh, uh, anywhere where uh, JavaScript runs, uh, Fable should also run as well. So we've uh, uh, we we are focusing on uh, SPA applications, but uh, uh, there's been uh, uh, Fable React Native applications as well. So creating mobile applications compiling f -sharp to JavaScript with Fable. So this is also possible. Perfect. So you can run, you can run f -sharp through Fable on everything where JavaScript runs, which these days probably includes my shoes. <laughs> All right. I hope so. I didn't try yet, but uh, ah. <laughs> it, should, it, should, it should be possible. Cool. Um, so thanks very much, Alfonso, for joining us and for the chat. It was, it was super nice to have you here. And, uh, We'll, we'll see more about SafeStack in a, in a later talk. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you again. And Thanks uh, to you. Thanks very much to me. Uh, thanks a lot for the people watching. Stay with us. We will be, we will be calling Jim in a few seconds uh, to talk about Xamarin and FSARP. And actually, Elmish inspired stuff as well. Yes. Mm -hmm.